Hi, everybody. Welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. Uh, you probably already heard the news, but Henry Kissinger, former Secretary of State, dies at 100. I first heard about this from Mindy from Temples of Jesus channel. I've interviewed her a couple times. I'll put the link for those videos in the description below. Uh, also, make sure to subscribe to her channel. But um, she told me about this, and uh, this interests me. Some of you may already know why. Uh, so in this Deseret News article, it says, During the height of his career, Kissinger was the most powerful Secretary of State in the post-World War II era, per the New York Times. Now, why am I bringing this up? Uh, why does this interest me? Some of you, some of you may already know, but it's been a while since we've talked about this. Let's go over to my second coming timeline. And uh, it has to do with uh, like a cluster of notable people that have all died within months of each other. Okay. So let me, let me show you what I mean. So last year on July 8th, Shinzo Abe was assassinated at the age of, 60, of 67, and he was Japan's longest serving prime minister. Okay. Longest serving prime minister of Japan. Okay. Later, uh, just a month later, Mikhail Gorbachev died at age 91. He was the longest living leader of the Soviet Union. So there's not going to be another one. There's not going to be, well, I don't know, maybe there could be another Soviet Union. But um, as of right now, we don't have the Soviet Union. And so we're not going to have another longest living leader of the Soviet Union that's going to die. It's over. And it was Mikhail Gorbachev. Okay, a month after that, Queen Elizabeth II died at age 96. She was the longest reigning British monarch and second longest reigning sovereign worldwide behind French King Louis XIV. Meaning that out of all royalty, out of all royal families, no matter what country, she was the second longest reigning in the world. Okay? And so you see what's happening here? We're looking at really important prominent countries, powerful countries, influential countries, and all within just a matter of weeks and months, their longest living or longest reigning or longest serving people are dying. And there's more. I'll, I'll go through the rest of the list. And uh, But let me just explain. I think that's important from a symbolic standpoint because I view it as symbolic as the end of, you know, these... Uh, periods of history, the, the end of these nations. We know that the end of nations is coming soon when the second coming happens. All kingdoms, all countries are going to belong to Christ when he comes. And so these people that were in charge of these powerful and influential countries, they're coming to their end. They're coming to their end and symbolically, their people that see their leaders uh, you know, it doesn't matter if it's been a while since they were in office. They're seeing their leaders uh, pass away and move on into the next world. And so it's the end of an era. That's really what it is. It's the end of an era. So you can see why Henry Kissinger, living as long as he did and passing away and being considered the most influential and powerful Secretary of State, why that might fit in with this. So let, let me just continue because there's more. There's more. Look at this. And it gets pretty interesting. So the day after Queen Elizabeth passed away, the very next day, President Nelson became the oldest living prophet and apostle of this, la this Latter-day Dispensation when he turned 98. Longest living prophet and apostle during this dispensation the day after Queen Elizabeth II passed away. All right, continuing. If I can find the next one. Okay, so Jing Zemin passes away at age 96. He was the longest living president of China and leader of the Chinese Communist Party. So we have Japan, we have the Soviet Union, we have the United Kingdom. Uh, we have our church, but with our church and President Nelson, he's still living. And that's kind of a symbol in itself that he's passing up all these different people. And now we have China. 
and then a lesser one, but I'm still I'm still taking note of it. Abigail Kawana Nakoa, uh, who was had the nickname or the kind of unofficial title, the last Hawaiian princess, she passed away at age 96, and she was linked to what was the the Hawaiian royal family. Uh, we did a video about that. Okay, December 29th, Edson Arantes do Nascimento, or Pele, as he's more commonly known, I think, the king of soccer, passes away. Now, you might be like, well, this isn't a country. This isn't an empire. It's not a, a kingdom. No, it's not. But for some people, ho- hopefully you've observed this in life, for some people, sports, entertainment, celebrities are more important to them than countries. Right. For some people, soccer is life. And so I still note this because this would have been a big event for people that are really big fans of soccer and fans of Pele. Uh, It's essentially, you know, you know that when it comes to like entertainment and hobbies and stuff like that, it can go from like a healthy hobby or interest into the realm of idolatry where it becomes your life and it's your top priority. And so I think that it is noteworthy. Anyway, so he passes away at age 82. Now, this is the one that really kind of gets me. Pope Emeritus Benedict passes away at age 95. He was, okay, for the entirety of the Catholic Church, almost 2,000 years, he was the longest living pope of all time. And I don't need to tell you how influential and powerful the Catholic Church has been and still is today. How is it that all these people from really powerful places, China, Soviet Union, uh, the United Kingdom, how is it that they're all passing away within this short period of time? I feel like if you have eyes to see and ears to hear, This is just another sign of the times that this world is soon going to end, that what we what we have known up until now is coming to an end. The writing is on the wall. And I think that this is some of that writing. What's interesting is that with him, he passed away on New Year's Eve as though he's not being permitted to see what happens the next year. Now, I don't know that anything is going to happen this year um, as far as like the second coming goes, other than uh, what's happened in Israel. This could be the beginning of Gog and Magog. Have no idea. It seems pretty significant. But whatever the case, he died on New Year's Eve. He did not see, he came very close, but he did not see the next year. Uh, interestingly, though, after he passed away, seven days later, that's when the is the uh, the judicial overhaul protests began in Israel, and arguably, this is what led, or this is one of the key events that led to the attacks on uh, October seventh, because Israel became very divided starting on this day, the seventh of all days. Um, This is what led Israel's enemies to believe that Israel was weak because these protests got really, really divided. People stopped showing up for uh, military duty. And uh, there were strikes and all sorts of chaos going on in Israel starting seven days after the Pope died. And, uh, okay, so let's move on. On January 10th, the last king of Greece... Constantine the second passed away. Now I realize that he was in exile for most of that time, but it doesn't matter because he is officially the last king of Greece. There's not going to be another one. He's the last one. He's the last one. And we all know the influence that Greece has had on the world, uh, especially ancient Greece. Okay. Two days later, Lisa Marie Presley passes away. She was known as the Princess of Rock because her father Elvis was the King of Rock. All right. And then look at this. On the 17th of January, Lucille Randon 
passed away at the age of 118 years and 340 days old. She was the longest living nun of all time. How is it that within a month of each other, the longest living pope and the longest living nun pass away? And by the way, if you're questioning any of this, I have my sources over here in column R so you can come over here and you can uh, verify. But that it's not a joke. The longest living pope and longest living nun, they both pass away within a month of each other. Okay, and then I think she might be the last one that I have on this list, except for I took note of this. What about the United States? You know, we've had all these really powerful countries. What about the United States? Well, on the 18th of February, Jimmy Carter entered hospice care. And guess what? He's the longest living U.S. president. And it's interesting because there's actually news coming out uh, as of yesterday about Jimmy Carter. Not, Not so much Jimmy Carter, but his wife. So check this out. Rosalind Carter to be laid to rest at family home after private funeral. This article is dated yesterday, November 29th. Here's Jimmy Carter, not looking so good. As was already noted, he's in hospice care. Uh, Both him and his family expected him to pass away within just like weeks uh, after entering hospice care, but he is still here. And the thing, the thing to think about is it might be fitting that of this series of like leaders and influential people, the ones that would pass away the last would represent the United States because of uh, obviously the importance of the United States to the church and to the world. It's a very important nation. I think there's something significant behind that. So anyway, this is what he looks like right now. Very different from President Nelson. Remember, I've pointed this out before. So President Nelson was born September 9th of 1924. And Jimmy Carter was born uh, at the beginning of the next month, October 1st of 1924. So the fact that we're looking at this series of leaders longest living, longest serving, whatever. And Jimmy Carter, Jimmy Carter happens to be one of them. And he's so close in age to President Nelson. <laughs> There's something to that. I'm sorry. I think there is. It's my channel. I'm allowed to think things, think what I want, share what I want. And this is what I think, that there's something behind this. So... Going back to this, I want to read a little about it here before we get to uh, Jimmy Carter. There's also one other new person, by the way, that I want to show you before we before we move on to Henry Kissinger. Okay, so Rosalind Carter, who transformed the role of first lady as a trusted political partner to for, to former President Jimmy Carter, and carved out her own humanitarian legacy, will be buried on Wednesday at her home in Georgia. Her funeral, a little more than a week after her death at age 96, was held at uh, Maranatha, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, Maranatha Baptist Church, where Jimmy Carter taught Sunday school for decades in her hometown of Plains. The private service was attended by family members and invited friends. Jimmy Carter, who is 99 years old and has been in hospice for nearly a year, was at the church to say goodbye to his wife of, of all numbers, 77 years. I find that kind of interesting. Um, okay, I don't have anything else from that article. Let's go over here. Americans glimpse Jimmy Carter's frailty and his resolve. Okay, here's another picture of him. Definitely showing his age right there. Okay, his face was pale and gaunt. His imagine that instead of instead of talking about Jimmy Carter, imagine that this is describing the United States and the point that we're at in in US history, world history, just before the second coming and just before the downfall of all nations. 
His face was pale and gaunt. His legs were wrapped in a blanket, and his eyes never seemed to make contact with the family members huddled around him. But on Tuesday, Jimmy Carter was there in the front row of a church in Atlanta, just a few feet from the coffin, holding Rosalind Carter, his wife of 77 years. Mr. Carter, 99, was some 164 miles from his home in Plains, Georgia, where he had been in hospice care since February. He was brought into the church in a wheelchair as the crowd of mourners at the memorial service looked on, many of them catching their first glimpse of him in nine months. Uh, that he would make such a trek in this condition was to some shocking and to his family worrisome. And then the article goes on to talk about other times that he probably did some things that he shouldn't have done uh, as far as like, you know, his health and stuff like that. Uh, Mr. Carter has rarely been seen in public since he entered hospice care. And in May, the Carter Center announced that Mrs. Carter, a longtime advocate for greater access to mental health care, had dementia. She died on November 19th at age 96. Okay, so um, he is probably going to pass away soon. Uh, like I've said before, we've already covered this in another video, but his family expected that he would pass away within like weeks, maybe months at best after he entered hospice care. And judging by these pictures, he, he is not looking very good. He's not looking very good at all. So <clears throat> whenever he passes away, based on this pattern that we're seeing of all these major countries, institutions, um, and their longest living or longest serving leaders passing away, uh, I would think that maybe we would, we would reach a new, new phase once he passes away. I really think that. And you may think that it's silly, but it's not going to be possible to duplicate this clustering of deaths anytime soon. The reason why is because, like I said, there's most likely not going to be another Soviet Union. If there is, then you have to have a leader of the Soviet Union uh, live longer than Mikhail Gorbachev. Um, with the United Kingdom, it's very unlikely that anytime soon we're going to have a sovereign that's going to reign longer than uh, Queen Elizabeth II. So, uh, same thing with the Pope. It's almost been 2,000 years and finally they have their longest living Pope. So, it's not going to it's not going to be able to be duplicated. Uh, if it is, it's it's probably going to be like a thousand years. In the, the second coming is not going to happen uh, that far away. So that's why I, I feel like it's very very statistically unlikely that this would all happen. All these people dying so close to each other, and in this kind of order, with the United States being last. And of course, you know, there's other countries, there's France, there's Spain and stuff like that. Um, but nevertheless, we have the ones that we have, and it's interesting how it's playing out. Okay, so moving on, uh, I, d I didn't see this until today. Uh, this is an article talking about Henry Kissinger. Uh, the name of it is Henry Kissinger, Controversial U.S. Diplomat Dies at Age 100. Here are the Biggest Deaths of 2023. So I was kind of looking through here. I did uh, control F and just searched for longest and, and uh, Diane Feinstein popped up. I guess she died on September 28th. So just a couple months ago. And what I didn't know is this Feinstein died Thursday night at, at age 90 as the longest serving woman in U S Senate history. She was elected as California's first female senator in 1992 in a special election alongside Barbara Boxer, who was elected the same night and won re-election re five times. Um, I'm, I'm almost, I think, I've been debating and I think I'm going to make a decision right now as I'm making the video. I think I am going to add Diane Feinstein and Henry Kissinger. Um to my spreadsheet, to my second coming timeline, because, you know, you could see her as representing the U S Senate. Uh, now I know it says longest serving woman in U S Senate, but still uh, a symbol of the Senate. 
And then Henry Kissinger, it's interesting because he was Secretary of State under Nixon and Ford. And like I said, in this Deseret News article, uh, them quoting the New York Times, he was the most powerful Secretary of State in the post-World War II era. So I haven't seen anything to say <clears throat> that he is the longest living. Uh, he's not the longest serving. I know that for sure because I looked at the the Wikipedia like list of secretaries of state. Um, but he, according to this, most powerful secretary of state. And I, I feel like I know that's true because my entire life I've heard his name come up time and time again, especially in school and in college. And so... I think I'll probably add him to the list because he represents, it's not so much that he's the longest living, but he represents an era. He, he represents a very, some very key things that have happened in U S and world history. In fact, uh, let's get into that. So first, who is he? Okay. Henry Kissinger. And these are things I didn't know because I never like looked that much into him before. So what I didn't know, Kissinger was a Jewish refugee. So he's Jewish. Kissinger was a Jewish refugee who fled Nazi Germany with his family in 1938. In the United States, he excelled academically and graduated, uh, one of these ridiculous words, uh, summa cum laude from Harvard College in 1950, where he studied political science under William Yandel Elliott. He earned his Master of Arts and Doctor of Philosophy at Harvard University in 1951-1954, respectively. Kissinger played a prominent role in United States foreign policy between 1969 and, of all years, 1977, pioneering the policy of detente, uh, detente, I don't know, with the Soviet Union, orchestrating an opening of relations with China, engaging in what became known as shuttle diplomacy in the Middle East to end the Yom Kippur War. And by the way, that's really interesting. It's really interesting, I think, that he dies during a war that mirrors or parallels the Yom Kippur War. We've talked about this before. Both wars, the Yom Kippur War and this war right now, both started as a complete surprise. And this war already, it, it's only, it, well, we're pretty soon here. We're going on two months, but it's still less than two months old. And it's already the worst war since the Yom Kippur War. And in some ways, worse. And uh, it, we're not even done with it. We're not even done. So Henry Kissinger, who helped end the Yom Kippur War, dies during this war what the weird and okay continuing and negotiating the paris peace accords which ended american involvement in the vietnam war i think for me that's maybe the the one thing that i knew for sure about him uh, is his connection to that okay after leaving government he formed kissinger associates an international geopolitical consulting firm Uh, kissinger wrote over a dozen books on diplomatic history and international relations Kissinger's legacy is a polarizing subject in American politics. He has been widely considered by scholars to be ineffective uh, Secretary of State and con- condemned for turning a blind eye to war crimes committed by American allies due to his support of a pragmatic approach to politics called real politic. For his actions negotiating a ceasefire in the Vietnam War, Kissinger received the 1973 Nobel Peace, Peace Prize under controversial circumstances okay so that's kind of the background and then i want to read some of this from uh, new york times now what we read in the deseret news is not in this article they must be quoting uh, or citing some other article but okay the death of former secretary of state henry a kissinger on wednesday at the age of 100 that's interesting wednesday that's the same day that jimmy carter's wife uh had her funeral he died on the day of her funeral that's weird okay prompted a surge of reaction with historians and friends hailing his diplomatic achievements and critics assailing his for assailing his foreign policy actions in vietnam and elsewhere around the globe as murderous 
Mr. Kissinger was Mr. Nixon's chief diplomat at the time of deep division and strife in the United States over the war in Vietnam. His long career inspired decades of debate about the morality of his actions. Friends like Michael R. Bloomberg, the billionaire and former New York mayor, said on X, formerly known as Twitter. You guys, listen, New York Times, we don't need to say that anymore. We all know that what X is now. It's, it's been enough time. We know it was Twitter. That his death is a loss for our country and the world. And for all of us who were fortunate enough to call him a dear friend and mentor. Mr. Bloomberg called Mr. Kissinger, quote, one of the most uh, uh, consequential public figures in American history and said that his legacy will shape the world for decades and even centuries to come. Well, I don't know about that. I think everything's going to change when Christ comes, but at least until then, sure. Here's a section called, To Many, Ch to Many Chinese, Kissinger's Death Ends an Era, right? Ends an era of engagement with the U.S. Okay, now this is interesting. The war in Gaza, okay, the war in Gaza is marked by Kissinger's work in the Middle East. He dies at the beginning of this war. He, or you can say it this way. He lives long enough to see the beginning of this war. A war that, according to this, I don't know. I'm not going to dig into all the history. We're just going to read what it says here. But it seems that he did have an influence uh, on this happening. And, and I'll, I'll explain in just a minute. So we'll read what it says, then we'll talk about it. Henry A. Kissinger is a key figure in the modern history of the Middle East, and his legacy is reflected in the current war in Gaza, which is, which is possibly the War of Gog and Magog. Can you imagine if this is the final war? Right now we're talking about somebody that helped um, essentially lead to this point. That, that's, like, that's like another way to think about it. We're talking about somebody, most powerful secretary of state, most, you know, whatever, influential, all that stuff. And he potentially paid a, played a key role in the final war, Gog and Magog, or Armageddon, however you want to think about it. One of Mr. Kissinger's most notable contributions was his role in establishing peace between Israel and Egypt. The two nations have since cooperated in enforcing, and this is the key right here. This is how you, you would argue that this, has, this partly led to the Gaza War. The two nations have since cooperated in enforcing a 16-year blockade of Gaza and in the delivery of humanitarian aid to Palestinians in the enclave after the Hamas-led October 7th attacks on Israel provoked a full-scale war. And uh, I've heard many commentators talk about the fact that um, par part part of like what has like radicalized people in in Gaza is um, this kind of like being isolated. And I'm not I'm not arguing <laughs> I'm not arguing against Israel. I'm not. It just it seems that since they've kind of been isolated, there's been this blockade. I know that Israel has allowed people from Gaza to work in Israel. Um, I think that's like a more recent uh, development, relatively speaking. Um, but but mostly, you know, you hear them, you hear the the people on their side talk about the fact that uh, Gaza, the Gaza Strip, is is like the largest open air uh, prison in the world. I, I'm not saying that it is or that it isn't or anything like that. I whatever. That's just how some people depict it on, on that side. And um, therefore you could see that if this is the outcome of Henry Kissinger and uh, negotiating peace with Egypt and Israel, then yeah, it looks like it, it probably did. It helped. <laughs> it helped get us to this point. Um, had that not happened, had there not been a blockade or uh, things like that, would it still have happened? Maybe. I don't know. I'm not a genie. I have no idea. Anyway, continuing. After its founding in 1948, Israel fought five wars with Egypt, notably the Arab-Israeli War in 1973, also known as the Yom Kippur War, after Egypt and Syria coordinated a surprise attack on Israel 
over Israeli-occupied territory around the Sinai Peninsula and the Golan Heights. That was the last war between Egypt and Israel. Mr. Kissinger, who was a Jewish refugee in his youth, facilitated intense negotiations with Israel, Egypt, and its Arab allies that helped end that war. Those talks proved to be a turning point in Middle East history. Through 33 days of traveling the region and back and forth journey, sorry, a back and forth journey that was called shuttle diplomacy, quote unquote, he persuaded Israel and Egypt to begin direct talks and make, make significant concessions. His marathon meetings in Jerusalem, Cairo, and Damascus helped pave the way for the 1978 David or Camp David Accords, which formally ended the state of war between Israel and Egypt, paved the way for diplomatic relations between the two countries, and led to the withdrawal of Israeli forces from the Sinai Peninsula. I think that might be... Oh, I have one more. Just one more thing here. Uh, Kissinger left the State Department a half century ago, but he never left his old job. There he is with... Eh. When Henry Kissinger turned 100 this year, Secretary of State Antony J. Blinken toasted him on uh, toasted him at one birthday celebration in New York, and the CIA director William J. Burns did so at another in Washington. There was a reason. Kissinger managed to retain his role as advisor to Washington's key policymakers a half century after he left office, oftentimes because what he did then was so relevant to the crisis of today. So, and, and I've known that because his name has come up uh, time and time again in uh, different like articles and news stories um, that I've seen all growing up. Uh, it, it wasn't like too uncommon uh, for him to come up as you're watching the news uh, when there's like some kind of thing happening and he's, he's advising people. So very important, uh, very influential, uh, was a key player uh, in a lot of these events. And now he passes away as this war is starting. I'm going to take note of it. And yes, I think I'm going to put it on my second coming timeline, both him and uh, Diane Feinstein. And then we're going to have to keep an eye on Jimmy Carter. And it's so weird. It, it's <laughs> it's so weird. I, I started this video just like looking for Henry Kissinger, like just to like put together a video, talk about it. And then these two other things come up. Diane Feinstein had no idea. And so now I now I'm aware of her. And then at the same time, it just so happens that yesterday, uh, Rosalind Carter had her funeral. You know, the wife of somebody that we're already watching as part of this list. It, it's 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 uncanny. It's weird. Okay, so that's going to be it for this one. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. Like this video if you liked it. Leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also, make sure to share it, and I'll talk to you guys later. 